Hey Canucks fans, have a bit of a juicy one for you here today. Would you take Kale McCarr over Quinn Hughes and or Elias Pettersson? I am Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Friday, May the 6th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Thanks for your great feedback to my reaction video last night. I reacted to the Avalanche Predators playoff game from yesterday, hence the inspiration for today's Kale McCarr video. And um, I had a lot of fun making that reaction video. I have to work out a couple technical kinks, but I thought it went well. And I realized I can't monetize those videos because I'm showing NHL highlights. Can't accept any tips or super thanks, but that's not the reason why I make those videos. But by the way, speaking of the super thanks, thanks to Justin and to Missy Love, who is Nadia Popovic Popovich's mom from Seattle. Uh, both of you leaving tips on my video yesterday uh, super thanks donations i appreciate you very much and thanks for your support as always and yeah uh, so i can't accept tips or thanks but that's okay i'm not making these videos for the money and making them because i enjoy making them but it did grow my subscriber base a little bit so that's kind of the trade-off can't uh, get a monetary um, you know can't monetize but it helped grow the channel a little bit so i'm gonna try and make some reaction videos throughout the playoffs when i was making yesterday's reaction video i was obviously seeing the wizardry, the brilliance of Kale McCarr, the, the defenseman for the Col Colorado Avalanche. And he's, for better or for worse, and it's not a bad thing, he's forever going to be linked to both Quinn Hughes and to Elias Pettersson. So let me explain why. And then really my question to you is, Canucks fans, I'm speaking to you Canucks fans, would you rather have McCarr over Hughes and or McCarr over Pettersson? And right off the bat, let me say that I really like Elias Pettersson. I really like Quinn Hughes. I think the two of them, they're basically, along with Demko, are three foundational franchise potential superstars on this team. And everyone knows it. Rutherford knows it. Alvin knows it. Boudreaux knows it. So we have no problem acknowledging that um, how lucky we are to have both Hughes and PD on this team. But they are going to be forever linked to Kel McCarr. Let's start with Elias Pettersson because it was the 2017 NHL entry draft where Kel McCarr went fourth and PD went fifth. That was the year that Nico Heischer went number one, Nolan Patrick went number two, and then Miro Heiskanen went number three to Dallas. Then McCarr four, Pedersen five. And I, you guys have seen my video from back then. I didn't know much about Pedersen at all, aside from he was this small, scrawny Swedish kid who had really good hands. And obviously, especially with his, the end to his season. I think we have a budding superstar in PD. He won the Rookie of the Year in 2019. Um, so obviously, um, we, we, have a, we have a really, really great player in PD. Great in the community, um, always fun in the media. So, and, and we saw, especially in the last half of the season, just how good he can be and how good he will be. And Pedersen actually has the second most points out of everyone in that draft class. I think Nico Heischer has the most points, but he's also played the most games. Pedersen has just over 200 points in his career. Then there's one other person, I can't remember who it is, there's one other person between Pedersen, it might be Robert Thomas actually, between um, Pedersen and then Makar, who's number four but uh, in, in scoring uh, from the draft class. But remember, he's number four as a defenseman. He has 180 career points in only like 165 games, so better than a point per game, whereas I think PD has 205 or something in 220, so just under a point per game. And then Makar, you, you might remember there was rumors around the draft time that the two guys that the Canucks had ranked number one, two, were Makar and then PD. So when Makar went off the board at four, it was an um, easy decision to take PD at five. So yes, uh, Pedersen wins the Rookie of the Year in 2019. And then uh, Makar won it the year after 2020. Then Makar will forever be linked to Quinn Hughes because, yes, drafted in different years, but they came in the league in the same year. They came in the league in the same year. And then w w Kill Makar drafted fourth overall in 2017. Quinn Hughes drafted seventh overall in 2018. Now we know that uh, Rasmus Dahlin went number one, and then Shveshnikov, and then uh, Hughes fell to Vancouver at seven. And what a, what a bonus to get Hughes at seven. So they both come in as rookies uh, the year after that uh, in the 1920 season. I, so McCarr took an extra year. And then 
Um, they both did really, really well. And McCarr beat Hughes for Rookie of the Year. And we always talk about these really four young, awesome defensemen in Darlene, first overall pick in 2018, Heiskanen, third overall in 2017, McCarr, fourth overall in 2017, and Hughes, seventh overall in 2018. So we always talk about this big four, and sure enough, there it was, McCarr and Hughes in their rookie seasons battling for Rookie of the Year, and Kale McCarr won that. Then in the next year, in 2020-2021, McCarr took a massive step up, and Hughes took a bit of a step down. And that's because... Um, 18, 19, 19, 20, yeah, 2021. 20, that's because uh, the Canucks really struggled, and, and Hughes was was part of that. It wasn't the reason, but uh, because the Canucks struggled, he struggled, or maybe it was both, whereas McCarr had an amazing year. So much so that McCarr finished second overall in Norris Trophy voting, loses, only losing to Adam Fox of the Rangers, another great young defenseman. So McCarr took a massive step forward. You say Quinn Hughes took a bit of a step back, in their second year and then in their third year you had uh, both of them play really well McCarr finishing in second overall in defenseman scoring behind Roman Yossi he had 86 points and Hughes finished about sixth or seventh uh, finishing with 68 points however setting a franchise record for Canucks defenseman so Hughes had a great year turned his plus minus around and we saw how good he was this year and McCarr had a phenomenal year and then McCarr has continued his phenomenal play through the playoffs including the game winning goal last night and getting 12 shots on goal in in, in the entire game just he's so dominant so uh, and I get that when you look back at draft years you could say well if the Canucks took McCarr in the you know if the Canucks took McCarr, actually now that I think about this even the McCarr fell to the Canucks at 5 in 2017 then you say well do would they have taken Hughes the very next year because McCarr didn't play for, uh, sorry, PD didn't play for Vancouver in the 2017-18 season. So you could argue that the Canucks would have wound up in the exact same spot in the draft. It's not like they would have been any better or worse had PD played or if McCarr played for them because neither of them played. So then you could say, yeah, the Canucks would have still drafted seventh in 2018. So then if you have McCarr instead of PD on the right side on the D, do you then take another first rounder? Um, uh, take a defenseman with another first rounder in, in the very next year. But then can you imagine if the Canucks had McCarr on the right and Hughes on the left? You play them together and it makes for the most amazing offensively gifted pairing ever. Or you split them up and now you have a, a, a burner on each and a, a, an amazing player on each of your top two pairs. You could do that. Or maybe the Canucks say, no, we already have McCarr in 2017. Then we have to go out and get a forward in 2018 as opposed to another D-man. So you, there's always that kind of that thing to, to kind of think about. Then when you compare McCarr to Hughes' career, uh, like I said, McCarr has 180 points in about 165 games or something like that. Hughes is a bit, um, a bit less, got about 165 points, I think. Uh, so uh, a few, um, he has fewer games, sorry, fewer points than, than uh, McCarr in his career. But um, he was still playing really well. And he's going to break any, uh, you know, D, uh, D records for the Vancouver Canucks um, as long as he stays with the healthy and stays with the team. So having said all that, we don't have to break down how PD plays. We know. We don't have to break down how Hughes plays. We know. And McCarr, he is a right shot defenseman, just as good of a skater as Hughes. Probably a more powerful skater with, with edge work that's just as good the way that he can he can glide and the way that he can move and switch directions and pivot. And you could argue he's probably got more offensive skill than Hughes. Um, great hockey IQ. I think one, the one thing that sets uh, Hughes apart is his, his, his amazing hockey IQ. But Kale McCarr obviously has a strong hockey IQ as well. So, again, we're, we're kind of splitting hairs a little bit in that I, I really love Pedersen. I really love Hughes. And I'm not at all saying that um, I'm not happy with them at all. But in watching Kale McCarr and in recognizing how he's always going to be linked to both Petey and Hughes, my question to you is, would you actually rather have McCarr on this team for the Vancouver Canucks? I'm not trying to start, any, start anything or be controversial. It's just a question that I often think about when I watch McCarr and when I, that I think about when I see McCarr, especially playing in the playoffs, winning uh, accolade after accolade and then Hughes or Petey. Well, I guess Hughes... Um, uh, Petey has the same Rookie of the Year, and McCarr technically hasn't won a Norris yet, so I guess, uh, you know, he, 
him and Hughes had the same number of Norris trophies. But you guys know what I mean. Makar seems to be more kind of celebrated, you know, more accolades, simply, and he's on, he's playing on a better team. And I guess that's the other thing. The other consideration is, is Makar a product of a really good team that has guys like McKinnon and Ranton and Landis Gog and, and Gerard and Devon Taves and stuff, and players like that? Um, or is he one of the main drivers as to why Colorado is so good? So, so many factors to think about, and I would love to read your comments below. So let me know in the comments below, would you rather have Kale McCarr over Quinn Hughes and or Elias Pettersson? And you can't cheat and say, I, I want to have all three. Well, no kidding, so do I. But would you rather have Makar over Hughes, a right shot D over a left shot D? A right shot D is harder to come by. Would you rather have uh, Makar slip to five, to the Canucks at five in 2017? Are you fine with, with the, their pick of PD, mostly because Makar wasn't on the board anymore? So, so many ways you can go with it. I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Shout out to my sponsors, Perform Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Sign up now for a free seven day trial. Use the link in my video descriptions and Advanced CD Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. Thanks to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, and Hall of Fame members Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Brufield, Shannon Hollingworth, HSM Fangirl Gaming, Smooth Groove, and Carol Bovenlander. Thank you for your support as always, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You're listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to, leave a tip or a super thanks if you'd like to, become a member or upgrade your membership if you'd like to, and leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Kel McCarr, will you take him over Quinn Hughes and or Elias Pedersen? Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day, great night. God bless and go Canucks go.